what most people think is once I'm successful, once I see things happen, then I'll believe in myself. It doesn't happen that way. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Fairley. How do I serve the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? The most unselfish thing a person can do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. Hello and welcome back to the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Show. This is our Q&A edition and this one is absolutely phenomenal from what's the best way to be able to scale a coaching business to how do you sell a high ticket offer and how do you communicate to people that have their brains closed to what you do? How do you get them to open it to accept a new reality? Now, I appreciate you joining us here on YouTube. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you have not yet and also ring that bell if you wanna get more videos like this. We get bombarded in the news feeds, we get bombarded on every single platform. We get notifications popping up from updates and all these different things. Yet if you want things that are actually gonna feel your mind so you can feel your thoughts, so that you can feel your actions and create different results in your life, then you're gonna to wanna to have things in your life that fill you up, which is what we're here to do. Now, if you've been here for a while, Thank you guys so much. You can actually drop a question down below in the comments and maybe we'll feature it on future episodes. Yeah, I'm actually streaming these live into the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group. So if you wanna connect with 5,500 other businessmen like you and I, no brainer, head over to facebook.com, type in the Billion Dollar Brotherhood or just click the link in the description below. It'll take you there. And every Thursday I'm going live for open coaching where you can get your questions not just answered, but maybe featured as well on the Billion Dollar Brotherhood show. So let's jump into it. It's going to be an absolutely phenomenal one. So question number one over here is coming from Mr. Calvin Richard, one of our BDB elite now inside of the BDB club. And he asked a question, which is, what do you think works best in bringing folks into a coaching program? Live webinar, five-day challenge, or something else. So awesome question, Calvin. I really appreciate you dropping that in there. So again, it's what works best to bring people into a coaching program, a live webinars, five-day challenge, or maybe even something else. So a five-day challenge is someone joining something that's like an accelerator. They go through it for five days. It's usually free or very small investment. And at the end of it, people have tasted and seen what you've done. Hopefully we'll ascend to the next program, we'll ascend to the next course, whatever. A live webinar is like a, a teaching style, right? It's like having people show up live to a web class. And inside of that, you're teaching and training. And at the end, the goal is to obviously convert them to clients. Now, both of those things. Now, one thing I want to touch on is the difference between coaching and some other things. So you have courses, which are more educational, usually a lower investment than coaching. You have consultants, which are usually going in and they're not really working to walk things out with people. They're teaching them how to do things, maybe implementing some of it. And three different styles of products, which is done for you. That's the highest investment style of product that there is in this space. Done with you, which is where you do it with someone, but they're implementing the strategies. And DIY, which is something you probably heard before from Pinterest, do it yourself. Now, what I found is that these are easy price points for a lot of coaches of, all right, well, what's the thing that they could do it on their own? What are the things I could do with them, like coaching? and done for you, like a total done for you package where they're maybe building out something for them, building the website, building the webinar, building the sales fund, whatever the thing is. So inside of this, the coaching program, typically when I look at coaches, you're giving them the information and then helping them overcome their personal beliefs, the struggles that they have that's kept them from implementing the things they know so far. Meaning that most people know that they should, to get healthier, they should go to the gym and eat better. Yet how many people go to the gym and eat better? People that smoke, know that they should stop smoking, but how many of them actually quit smoking? So they know they should quit smoking. They maybe even know how, but they're not actually implementing it. And that's where a coach comes in, is getting people to do the things that they've always wanted to do that they would never do without them. It's also my definition of sales, because inside of coaching, we're selling people to do something different, same exact thing. So what I found out of these is that five-day challenges and webinars, these are great things to get people into two different style camps right here. Uh, so I don't think either of these things are the best thing. Why? Because these things have been around for maybe a decade, uh, even less. Five-day challenges are definitely very, very new. My top two things, and you can write this down, are live events and virtual live events. These two things are going to be your top converters, getting people into a coaching program. So inside of that, and I'm talking about over an application phone sale, it's phenomenal. 
Yet you can spend weeks getting 40 people onto an application phone sale and you can get 40 people into an to, from a live event to a coaching program in just one day. Now it takes time to get up to that day where you're holding the event, yet that's where these five day challenges and live webinars come from is it's awesome way to get people to either invest in a different program and get a ticket to either the virtual live event with it. So a free ticket technically for investing in maybe your DIY or course style product, something that's more towards 500, a thousand, two thousand dollars since that's what they're ready to buy after a five day challenge or a webinar, they may not be ready to go to a coaching package that takes your time. That probably should be around 10, 25 or $50,000 minimum to be able to invest in. So five days, jumping in for free or 97 bucks or 37 bucks, 27 bucks. I may not be ready yet and understood enough to be like, Hey, I'm going to jump to the 25, 50 K package. And if I am, I would have never even done the small package. Cause that means I was already decided in the first place. So at the end of these challenges or these webinars, these are great places to either sell a different product and bundle in a virtual ticket or live event ticket. You can see 10 X growth cons going on right now. So live events are coming back or to actually just sell the virtual event that now takes them to the next level for the thing that you've built hunger for inside of the five day challenge or that webinar. So now you're taking them from that free product to something that's from the 500, a thousand, 2000. And then in that fulfillment, then going after the coaching program, that to me is some of the best ways to do it right now inside of the industry. A great one who's doing it is, is paying June. Uh, physical events have been around since Jesus. Jesus went around, preached, people followed it. There's still billions of people that follow what he says today on the planet. And that all came from a live event. And then we're seeing the same thing happen inside of virtual events where this is the best way to get new coaching members inside of your community right now. Just telling you right now, it's the best thing. So Calvin, shout out to you again, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate the question. Let's head on to question number two. Okay, second question is actually in the Instagram DMs and it's a video. Uh, my the Ryan, I think he actually introduces his name right here inside the video. Hey Nick, how's it going, man? It's Mike here and I'm just sending you this video because I really mess with your content, brother, you know, everything you put out. Super dope, super valuable, learned a ton from it. I really loved your reel on, you know, your um, daily habits, man, that uh, spoke to me for sure. And you know, man, I was just curious, what would you say was your biggest roadblock that you had to overcome in online business to you know, achieve the success you have right now? I'd love to hear back from you, man. So let me know what you think. See you. Micah, first off, awesome video message. Anyone else who does that, those are some of my favorite. And people can see your face here, your Instagram handle, etc. So Micah, thank you so much for consuming the content. I think it's really fun. And this is why I love the live stuff that we do inside of the Brotherhood Facebook group. So if you're not there, make sure to go over there. And we'll make sure to link your Instagram. So thank you. He said, what's the biggest roadblock that I went through in going after entrepreneurship and business? And that, that's a really good question. So there's many people out there that have not really had big setbacks yet. They started in business, they had quick success, maybe they're still on that. There's other people that have had major setbacks and maybe it's even ruined them. They tried business before in the past and they stopped. I would say that big failure at first was one of the biggest roadblocks for me. When I was 20, my wife was 18, we started our first business. We thought we were gonna do really well. We failed everything. I drove my wife and I into debt. I didn't know how to really run my own business. I went out there and tried to be a professional athlete afterwards. And that in between time of like business didn't work for me. I'm going to go try something else driving us into debt. I lost all that confidence that I had in being an entrepreneur. And it got me to one, I was cleaning carpets for two and a half years, making 20 K a year. And inside of that place, I just remember my confidence being at all time low. I had a $75 a week food budget for my wife and I. I had a $25 a week eating out budget split between my wife and I. So that's $12.50 each. Two and a half years on the road, I only ate Chipotle out three times. I was charging my credit card for groceries and gas while I was using my debit to be able to pay for my car and the place that we lived. And watching that credit go up over and over and over again, not only did it make my confidence go in the dumps, it also gave me massive anxiety thinking at some point I'm going to run out of credit and I physically don't know what to do to change my situation. So inside of this as well, my wife was still showing up and, and investing in herself and trying to go to these events. I couldn't afford a haircut. I didn't want to go to the events. I didn't know why people would ever buy for me. And this is where I struggled with this massive syndrome where I had tried something before I'd failed and I was worse than I had been before. So back in the day, I was always just a little bit better than I used to be because I started from nothing. 
at this point, I'd had a tiny bit of success and then was going totally backwards. So now I was allowing my external environment to define, define my internal reality. So my mentor, Yost Jansen, talks about two different types of identities. You have earned identity, which he's a Navy SEAL. So forever, he's a Navy SEAL. Forever. Whether he's fat, broke, doesn't matter. He is a Navy SEAL because he's earned that identity. NFL Super Bowl champion, earned identity. One of the hardest things about that is upkeeping and living up to that identity that you've earned. Navy SEALs always get challenged by people and like they want to do push-up challenge and pull-up challenge and running challenge. And they, they always have this pressure of like, I need to be a Navy SEAL. So there's that side of earned identity. You know, no one can take it away. Then you have your internal identity, which is most important because that's what shapes our external identity. What most people think is once I'm successful, once I see things happen, then I'll believe in myself. It doesn't happen that way. You don't become a middleweight champion of UFC and then you have confidence in yourself. You have to have the confidence in yourself first and create the external reality. So one of the things that I did is I started getting really clear on where I was going, emotionalizing it because a goal that isn't emotionalized is just a wish. So I started getting really clear on where I wanted to go, emotionalizing it, seeing it, feeling it, and really locking myself into that state, knowing that it was just something that was going to happen, whether people liked it or not. And it gave me this confidence internally of where I was going that made me not think about where I was at as much. Meaning instead of looking at myself as a broke carpet cleaner, because that was my external environment, I was kind of looking at myself like I was Warren Buffett. If you were to strip everything of Warren Buffett's, put him in a carpet cleaning position, he wouldn't think any different of himself because he knows who he truly is. He knows his potential and he knows he's going to go right back up to the same spot. And that's the power of building that skill set and building that belief. So that process was definitely the biggest roadblock for me was how do I keep myself from thinking I'm a broke carpet cleaner that no one wants to be around if I don't change my situation, but how do I change if I'm not around good people, learning good things and investing in myself? And so I started having my internal identity define my external reality, where I started looking at myself for who I was going to be in my potential rather than looking at myself for where I was at in that moment. And I was telling, hey, world around me, you're going to freaking shift to my life that I say I am and where I'm going, I'm not going to shift based on the place that I'm at. The last way to say this is if you take a pauper and put him in a prince situation, have him rule over kingdoms, he'll reduce it down to rubble. If you actually get a king and you put him in a pauper situation in poverty, he'll always rise up to be a king again because it's all in the identity of the person, not the environment and their situation. Awesome question, dude. Awesome. Third and final question comes from Mr. Joe Nicasio. We have the technology to transmit a gigabyte around the world in a nanosecond. That seems really big in a small amount of time, so that's good. However, they can take days, weeks, months, or even years to penetrate one inch of the human skull. What's your best secrets for truly getting through to people? Uh, th th first off, that was funny. The first time I read that, I actually thought, I was like, this skull is that thick that I'm pretty sure they can do surgery faster. And then I realized that he's saying, in technology, we transmit a gigabyte around the world in a nanosecond, yet just to get into someone's brain, just to get them to change a little bit, just to get through to people, it could take weeks, months, years to even penetrate one inch of the human skull, which is a great question. He's super successful in his own right. Yet this was something that I struggled with a lot in the very beginning. If anyone's been through this, like you believe something or you know something's true and you want other people to believe it as well. But for some reason, no matter what you say, they're resistant to it. So the first business I got into is network marketing. I remember inviting two great friends. One of them was my best friend. I invited them over to my house because I was like, you got to see what I just saw. It's insane. So I just shove it down their throat and they don't see it. And like, I almost lost my friendships. They're like, I don't see it. And I was so mad, right? I'm trying to shove it down their throat because I see it. Why don't they see it? And I consistently saw year after year, my business not growing, my influence not growing, that I was consistently seeing the same thing happen, which is people saying, what? I don't know what you're talking about. So not only did they not understand me, which I freaking hate, on top of that, if I was trying to get them to see something that I saw, they never saw it. So I'm like, you need to invest in a mastermind. Look at what it did for me. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. Like maybe, I was like so frustrated by this. And one of my mentors, Cole Hatter, he taught me something that's influence over persuasion and even over like convincing, right? Like convincing is the worst side of just telling people what to do. 
Why is that a problem? Because they didn't go through the process that you went through to come to the conclusion that you came to. So at some point you didn't believe what you believe and a process happened to get you to believe what you believe. And until they go through that themselves, they're not going to believe what you believe because they already have their own beliefs. And for them to lay down their own beliefs and just pick up your belief, they'd have to be like crazy. So this is a good thing that they don't do that. So how do we get them to believe what we believe without telling them? There's a quote that says, if you say it, you could be wrong, but if they say it, it's always right or it's gospel. It's like truth. So if people say it, if they believe it, then it's there. So it's kind of like the movie Inception. They couldn't tell that guy like that his father didn't want him to be in the family business or whatever it was. They had to get him to believe that it was his idea and his belief that that was true. And it's the same exact thing with this. One of the best ways to get in the human skull is to one, know your audience, identify with them, build that rapport. That's a given. There's trust there. Inside of trust, there could be vulnerability. There could be truth set. The second thing though is you can either tell your story or someone else's story of how they came to the epiphany or the belief that you want these people to believe, whether it's to buy your product or to stop smoking or to change their situation or to get around better people or to click the link below or to like the thing or to comment on something. It's all the same thing. So what I'll do is I'll tell the story of what if I tell them the authentic, truthful, and accurate, this is big, it's not as effective, it's not accurate, story of how I came to the conclusion that I came to and how can I have it relate to where they're at as well. And so inside of that, it would look something like, let's say investing in mastermind. If I wanted to reach people that had invested in maybe coaching before and courses and they didn't work, I would talk about my story. Be like, hey, like for years, I remember watching YouTube and not investing in myself. And I saw that that didn't work. I bought courses and I had mentors and I had all these things, but I was still alone. And it wasn't until I went to this one event and they pitched this $5,000 event and I invested my money and I was so scared and I failed for six months in the program and I finally showed up to the place and I realized that I had successful people around me that could look at my business, give me advice. I left there with confidence, a better plan. I went out there and executed it. I did over $20,000 in sales and I've had, a not, I've had every month profitable since then five years ago. What happens in that story? They come to this epiphany where they go, man, I need a mastermind, but I didn't tell them that. I didn't say you need a mastermind because look at what happened to me. I said, oh my gosh, you guys wouldn't believe I was going through this and then this happened and then I did this and this solved it. And they're like, man, I want that. So then all of a sudden later, if I provide that as a solution for them, now they're going, that's what I was looking for, right? They, they came to the same conclusion in their mind that I came to, that the mastermind was the number one way to see massive results in their life. And I didn't tell them to do it. So the best way to get through to people is to build the rapport understand what they care about, what they're going through, and to tell a story of either someone else or yourself, what you went through accurately, truthful, transparently, and the story that got you to the conclusion or the epiphany that you want them to believe so that they can have that epiphany themselves and make that their belief. So it's not just bar belief. It's not someone just telling them what to do. It's something that they can actually say is truth because they came to the conclusion themselves. I go in depth on this inside of our B2B Elite Mastermind, inside of our B2B Club calls. And if you guys have more questions on this, let me know. This is something that I absolutely love. It's transformed my business. I don't even tell people what to do anymore. I just tell them the story. Maybe if someone's not showing up to the coaching calls, I'll talk about how I invested in a coaching a coach and how I missed one of the calls and how it's proven that when you miss one call, you have a 15% higher chance to miss the next one and then almost a 100% chance of missing the third one because you built this momentum. So the biggest thing is if you missed a call, I showed up and I realized, why didn't I show up to these? It changed my whole life. It gave me these results. And they're like, oh my gosh, I need to show up to the calls. I've gone through the same thing. But I didn't tell them to show up to the calls. I told them a story of why showing up to the calls is important. And they are like, I want that. Pretty freaking awesome, right? So awesome question again, Joe. I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys for this Q&A episode. This was absolute fire. Amazing questions. We left some of them out of here. One of them I wish it was inside of this YouTube video, yet it's in the replay inside of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group. It was all about how do you scale a coaching business from 100K to seven figures? What's the number one focus? And I just dropped gold bombs and really simplify what most people are doing. So if you want to go check that out, you're going to want to go over there. Also, if you not grabbed my book yet, the uh, Modern Day Businessman Success Without Sacrifice, you're going to want to go do that. It's 100% free, nicholasbarely.com slash 
ebook, grab my book, 12 chapters, bestseller. We'd love for you to be able to have that for free to go more in depth of what it means to be a redefined businessman, to be a three-dimensional businessman and be a part of this brotherhood. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys on the next episode.